was a part of the NAACP in Humphreys County, Belzoni. I, I know everybody know what Belzoni is. He registered to vote in 1953. And they had a vision, the NAACP in Humphreys County, that they were going to register so many blacks in their county that they were going to elect somebody to office so they could have some representation in our government. Well, I think about that, about that, uh, in 54, we got the Brown case, right? And they said, desegregate with all deliberate speed. And you know that there was no speed about it because I think my brother went to one of the first uh, integrated schools in 71. A lot of them, you know, in our area, 71 took them. 54, 71, there was no speed about it. But anyway, uh, when, the, when the Brown decision was passed down, Mega Evers got involved in the NAACP. I think he was 30 or 31. And he and Reverend George Lee, uh, their name was listed on the hit list to get killed, murdered by the Klan. And Mega Evers was the youngest person to be on that list. He was 30 or 31. And uh, Reverend George Lee was number one on the list because he was registered voters in Belzoni and in Humphreys County. They had registered 100 black voters. And uh, because of intimidation and uh, uh, the whites telling the blacks who work with them, if you didn't withdraw your name, you lose your job. Nine people withdrew from the list. And uh, then they murdered Reverend Lee in the daytime in front of many, many witnesses. And um, to me, uh, that was just sad that all he wanted was the right to full citizenship, which he was just speaking about. Either you're a citizen or you're not a citizen, but everybody should have full rights to uh, citizenship. And uh, well, I thought that those things were important to mention because I didn't think that anybody that was reading and read, I, I attended to, I wanted to reach high school students originally. And I had defined terms in my book. But when I got a contact <coughs> with the publisher, they made me delete all of the uh, definitions out. And they marketed it to a whole other audience, not high school, but uh, college. But I thought that people would understand what James Meredith did better if they understood his generation and what was happening you know, in the world 50 years ago. So that's why I wanted, I weaved in other things. You all, everybody here, anybody here know Dorothy Bedford? She's run for mayor a few times. A whole lot of time. Yeah, yeah, she's right. <laughs> Well, she's, she, her interview was in here. She was a student at um, Jackson State. She, she was uh, a minority of the students at Jackson State because she was one of the students who participated in the protests. And if you went to Jackson State in the 60s, the president of the school would expel you for participating in a protest. But most of the people who participated in the protests went to Tougaloo, which was a private school. So they didn't have that kind of pressure from their leadership or teachers. But Ms. Bedford told me that one of her teachers didn't share the president's views. And he told his class um, when they were getting ready to protest the assassination of uh, Meg Evers, he went to his chart board and he started writing. And he said, oh, when I get through writing, there should be no one in here. In other words, he was telling them to run out and go support this march. 
that that they were not supposed to go and support her. She was one of the people um, that went. And um, when my uncle integrated Ole Miss, uh, one of the interesting things to me was that I interviewed and talked to women who said they literally cried. <laughs> they just cried when he walked through the door. Because to, to them, him walking through the door meant that life was going to be better for their sons. Because their sons uh, had a hard time getting a job. We were poor. We were so poor then that an entire family, uh, John Horn, you all know John Horn. I interviewed his aunt. And she told me that, uh, uh, I think she said it was 10 of them. And then uh, they gained five more children because one of her relatives died, so they brought in some more uh, family members. But she told me that um, they used to all pick cotton. And she said that everybody in their household pick cotton and the money went to their daddy and the daddy took care of the household expenses but he sent two of the kids to college. One was Charlie Horn, the father of John John Horn. Well getting uh getting the education back then was so important to people that if they could just get one or two members of their family to go to Jackson State and take up teaching and do better, then they were supposed to help the other ones. And it was more of a, a family united kind of a, a village kind of mentality that we had back then. And I thought, wow, they had to pick cotton and put the money on the table and somebody benefited more than the other in a sense, you know, but uh, that's the kind of sacrifices that uh, Families, you know, back then, then made, and uh, and then you know, um, I thought about uh, Doctor. I mean, yeah, uh, George Harmon. You know, Harmon, Drugstore Fair Street. He he died. Um, Mr. Harmon told me that I interviewed him too, and he told me that when he was nine or ten years old. He used to pick cotton in Yazoo City. He said he hated picking cotton so bad that he used to cry in the field. And his mother catered to his dislike of field work and let him go downtown Yazoo City and get him a job. Well, the job that he got was working for a white pharmacist in downtown Yazoo City. So he really looked up to this white pharmacist, and he wanted to be just like him. He told me, um, people used to come in the store and say, uh, uh, that medicine you gave me sure did make me feel better. And to him, a little kid, this man is important. I want to be important just like him. That's what he told me. He said, I want to be just like that white man. So when he went to World War II and he came back, um, everybody told him, you can't be no pharmacist. A black man can't be no pharmacist. You got to go to Jackson State, Alcorn, or uh, Tuvalu, or somewhere like that. But you could only be a teacher, or a preacher, or certain other fields. You couldn't study law at uh, Jackson State. You still can't study law at Jackson State. You still can't be a doctor at any of our black colleges. We still got uh, a way to go. We still trying to get a stadium. <laughs> the stadium and the sporting events is what, what brings the money to the, to the